Before you say anything, I already know what you're gonna comment. Why are you looking at an Intel motherboard? Well, to be honest, this one looks a little bit interesting because with some of the improvements Intel has apparently made since the launch of their Core Ultra Series 2 processors, I think it's about time we start taking a look at some newer boards that are possibly coming at Computex this year. This is the brand new MSI B860i Edge Ti Wi-Fi, and to be honest, I don't even know if this board exists. It turned up here last week and I decided that, you know what, let's take a look at this board because it is new and there's no information about this thing anywhere. So maybe I'm gonna be in trouble after this video. But before that, here's a word from today's video sponsor. Take it away, Claire. This video is brought to you by VIPSCDKey.com. Have you ever installed Windows 11 only to see the watermark of death? You don't need to fork out a couple of hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor from VIPSCDKey.com for a tenth of the price. You can use our code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. How good is that? That takes that already cheap Windows 11 key and makes it even cheaper. It's easy as placing your order. Bingo, bingo. You've got your new key on your orders page. You chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR to get 30% off for this month only. Link in the description. On with the video, back to you, Nick. All right, here it is, ladies and gents, the MSI MPG B860i Edge Ti Wi-Fi. Let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a closer look at everything that comes with this board. And spoiler alert, there's not a whole lot that comes with motherboards these days. We don't get discs. We don't get anything fancy at all. Just a couple cables and everything that you need to get yourself up and running. Speaking of cables, the first one we've got is a three pin five volt addressable RGB to JST adapter cable. There's a single SATA or SATA cable for your 2.5 inch SSD or your three and a half inch hard disk slash spinning rust drive. There's an MSI breakout cable for the front panel connectors for all your lights and all your switches and everything you need to turn your PC on and to let you know that it's on, as well as a single M.2 screw for the M.2 slot on the back side of the motherboard. The M.2 slot on the top side has a quick release mechanism, which I'll show in a moment. There's a bunch of documentation here. You've got a quick installation guide, which will help you if you've never socketed a CPU before, or if you're not quite sure what anything is when you're looking at the motherboard. It does make your life a whole lot easier if you've never built a PC before. And it is something that we're seeing quite a lot at the moment lots of new PC builders around. And finally, the antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 7. It's right there in the name, guys. It's the Edge Ti Wi-Fi. All right, let's unsheath this new mini ITX board and take a little bit of a closer look. But as I've already mentioned, we don't have a lot of information about this board, but I did want to share it with you because it does look quite interesting. Let's dive in. On the bottom left of the board, we've got a front panel audio header, and then we've got a USB 2.0 header. This is now typically used for RGB controllers and liquid coolers and legacy USB items. Along the right hand edge, we've got the front panel connector for all your lights and all your switches to turn on your PC and to let you know that it's on. We've got a USB type A front panel header. We've got a USB type C front panel header. Only two SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. There's also a postcode debug LED array on the surface of the board. I thought I'd zoom in a little bit so you guys could get a bit of an idea of what this would look like. This is to help you diagnose your PC. There's a single PWM fan header and the 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new motherboard. On the top edge, we've got a three pin five volt addressable RGB header, two more PWM fan headers, there's also this four pin 12 volt analog RGB header, as well as an EPS power connector to send power to your CPU. As for the single PCIe slot on this board, what I can guess is this is a PCIe Gen 5 full by 16 slot for your graphics card. Like I said, guys, there's no information on this board whatsoever. As for the VRM layer on this board, I did find a little bit of information here. It's got an eight phase direct VRM layout, and I can almost guarantee that it's an eight plus two plus one phase VRM, given that there are 11 chokes in total on the board and MSI for their latest motherboards have typically done plus two plus one phase VRM layouts for additional power. For VRM cooling, the heat sinks are quite large, as well as that IO cover being a massive heat sink to help cool that VRM layout. Then there's a heat pipe that connects both of the VRM heat sinks together. 
Because this is an Intel board, it has an LGA 1851 socket, which supports Intel Core Ultra Series 2 processors. And it's got standard cooler mounting here that you'd find from all of the LGA 1700 boards and upwards. Taking a bit of a look inside of the socket, you can see that there's a lot of pins. Now, the reason why I do shots like this is to show new PC builders what the inside of a socket looks like, just in case you've never seen it before, because chances are, if you're watching a video like this, you may have never seen inside of a socket before, and it's good for educational purposes. Flipping the board over, you can see there's not a lot going on here. In typical MSI fashion, it does have labels for all of the keep out zones on the back of the board, and the key knight out there will also notice there's a single M.2 slot back there, which I'm gonna talk about in just a moment. As for the RAM compatibility, I'm not too sure here. I will say that it would probably support 128 gigs of DDR5 memory at around about 9,200 mega transfers overclocked. I'm saying this because this is typical of what we're seeing for other MSI B860 boards, but the truth is there's no information. <laughs> But some of the information I do have is about the M.2 slot configuration. So on this top M.2 slot on the board, it's a PCIe Gen 5 by 4 M.2 slot. And if we flip the board over, we have another single PCIe Gen 4 by 4 M.2 slot. So two slots in total. For rear I.O., we've got an HDMI 2.1 port. We've got a Thunderbolt 4 port. We've got some 5 gigabit USB Type-A ports. I like that MSI is labeling the speed of all of their USB ports now. MSI has made it pretty clear as of last year that all of their boards have five gigabit ethernet now. There's also a 10 gig USB type A port, a 10 gig USB type C port, the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 7 and an audio interface with optical slash spit if out. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison between the Z890i Edge Ti Wi-Fi and this new B860 board. What you're seeing is the PCB layout is quite similar. However, the key knight out there, if you can read it from this angle, will notice that the model number for the PCB itself is quite similar. It's got one number difference. MSI typically has versions of the PCBs, which sometimes they'll use for multiple boards, even if the chipset is different. We have seen this before. And it's an interesting way to develop motherboards because it can speed up the process. Considering conductors between motherboards that use the same socket are more than likely going to be the same, but the chipset will be different. As for differences in VRM layout, the Z890i board has a 10 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 phase VRM layout. Whereas, like I said, this has an 8 phase direct VRM. However, there are additional phases here but I'm not quite sure. Like I said, I'm guessing it's a plus two plus one, but it could also be a plus one plus one plus one. We'll find all of this out when this board officially releases and we'll probably get more information about this board at Computex. I'm not even sure I'm allowed to be covering this board right now, but the chipset is available. So yeah, there can't be an embargo for a board for a chipset that's already available. <laughs> As for the rear I.O. differences between the Z890i board and the B560i board, the B560i board is at the top here and the Z890i board is at the bottom and it's very, very clear as to what the differences in rear I.O. are. The Z890 board has lots and the B860i board is conservative. Speaking of conservative, here is some uh, conservative B-roll of this new board. Hope you guys enjoyed taking a little bit of a look at this new MSI board. Like I said in the intro, I know nothing about this motherboard whatsoever. I've got no information. I don't know anything. There is nothing online about it. This MSI board right here might as well as not even exist because 
as I said, there's no information, but there are a few things that we can gather from this board. First of all, as you saw earlier in the video, the PCB design is kind of similar to the Z890i Edge Ti Wi-Fi, but there are enough differences to make it a new PCB. Guys, they can use the same PCB for different chipsets. That's, that's never in doubt. And as I spoke about with the revision number on the bottom of the board here, you can see that they're very close in revision numbers as well. MSI typically has PCB models and then they iterate on those models. So they can reuse the same PCB for multiple boards. But what I can see with this board is, it looks as though it's got a similar VRM layout to the B850i Edge Ti Wi-Fi, which is an AM5 board. I guess I should not just address the elephant in the room, but let's trample it. Why an Intel board? Why right now? Well, I've seen people talking about performance for this Intel platform getting a whole lot better, but I haven't had time to test any of it because I'm a busy guy. I got lots going on outside of YouTube as well. What I want to do is do what I did, I think it was the end of last year, maybe it was the start of this year. I wanna see what the deal is with gaming performance again after Computex. All right, so we're gonna build another Intel gaming PC. This time, I'm gonna use it for a month and then we're gonna find out the entire story. I've seen some comments of late with people coming and commenting on our 4K gaming video that I did with Intel and I know that it's GPU bound, but a lot of what people don't understand is latency doesn't come from just your ping when you're playing games online. It comes with the time it takes for an interface card to talk to the CPU because the graphics card doesn't just get instructions from nowhere. It needs to come from somewhere and the CPU is doing all of that. Even if you're gaming at 4K, where do you think the processing is coming from? It's not the GPU. The GPU is drawing triangles. This is doing all the thinking. I'm trying to dumb this down in the most simple way as possible, just so people who don't quite understand what I'm trying to say can kind of grasp what I'm saying here. But there will be a latency increase if the CPU is bad, or if the way that the CPU communicates with any interface card is not optimal. Frequency and speed is only one small part of the equation when it comes to computing. How long it takes for those instructions to go through the pipeline is the other part. Frequency can improve that, but there needs to be a time for a reply saying, hey, yes, no, yes. That's uh, how binary works. How long does it take for it to confirm everything? Okay, anyways, in terms of this MSI board, like I said, it doesn't exist, so I have no idea about pricing, and chances are I'm gonna get in trouble for making this video even though this chipset isn't under embargo. Let us know what you think. Is Intel getting better over time? I don't know yet. I haven't had time to investigate, so we'll do that at a later stage, but to kick this off, uh, this is probably going to be the board that I'm going to use because I think it's quite interesting with its feature set and I don't think this one's going to be too expensive. Let us know your thoughts down below. Or don't. It's up to you. Thanks for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. I'm not doing that. That's old. I'm not doing that. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>